Thinking of renting on Airbnb and wondering if it's taxable? Well, watch on. As business accountants, my team and I spend all day long helping business owners on their journey. Now, you could argue Airbnb isn't technically business, but as business accountants, of course, people are always looking to do side hustles and the like, and Airbnb, as you can imagine, over the last year particularly, has been a massive deal for a lot of people, so I thought it'd be a good one to just talk to you about in terms of how the tax works and whether it is actually taxable. So that's what this video is all about. Regardless of your situation, we're gonna look at those issues. But before I do, if you like these types of videos, make sure to click the subscribe button below so you get notified whenever we release more videos just like it. So is Airbnb be taxable? Well, in short, yes it is. Uh, generally, it's taxable income like any other kind of main income that you're going to get in the UK, and as a result, uh, people do need to consider what they need to do. However, there are some really generous reliefs around Airbnb in a lot of circumstances that mean that you might not pay any tax. So that's what we're going to look at. So firstly, of course, in the UK, uh, generally, generally, and in all these videos, we're talking generally, usually, those kind of things, you're going to be allowed 12,500-ish, depending on the year and when you're watching this, of income in the UK that is tax-free. So if you're earning under that amount or earning nothing because you've just not got a job or anything and this is your, say, your only income, then the likelihood is if your rents and your profit from that Airbnb is under 12 and a half grand, you're not actually going to pay any tax anyway. But So that's, that's the first caveat, that of course is there. And then we're going to look at two other reliefs, one of which is what they call rent a room relief. And that's designed for, if you were just uh, sort of letting a, a room in your house to a lodger, for example, you can potentially claim this relief, but it also works in many of the Airbnb situations as well. And that's quite a good one. And then there's this sort of micro entrepreneur type allowance. They call it like the property and trading allowance of a thousand pound. And you're allowed to earn that thousand pound without paying any tax. So we're gonna talk about that as well as we go. So let's talk about rent a room. How does that work? Well, rent a room, if you imagine it's as it sounds, if you're renting a room in your house, so if you're Airbnb, be in a room in your house, then generally you're going to be able to deduct seven and a half thousand pound from your profits. So if you imagine the first seven and a half thousand pound effectively is tax free, forgetting any other sort of expenses or anything else, you know, if it's under that, um, then it's fine. You can claim that relief. Now, if you jointly own that house, then you need to half it. So it's, you know, because if you imagine the income is going to be halved anyway, so the allowance is halved as well. So it's only going to be 3,750 if there's two of you. Now, a couple of caveats on this one is that it needs to be a room in your house, in your main residence, a residential let. It's not something you can let to on a commercial basis for storage to your company or something like that. We're talking about Airbnb and, and the likes. And the other thing is that it needs to kind of imagine the best way to think about it is you're sharing your front door. So if they've got to come through the main door or even if it's the back door, you know, you're sharing a door in your house really with them to be able to do it. So if you've got a permanent bit down the bottom of the garden or something like that, that's generally not going to count. They need to kind of be part of the main building. You can have certain, I'm not going to get too uh, technical in this video, but there are certain instances where they can be sort of separated. But just think really, if you're sharing the front door, it's likely that you're actually going to be able to claim rent a room relief on this particular income. Presuming that it is furnished accommodation inside of your main residence so there we go that's kind of the main the main criteria now if you do as I say you can then look at your profits either way if they're under seven thousand five hundred pound of rents if you are solo doing it or half that if you're jointly then you're not going to pay any tax anyway but if the rents are higher than that you can still use the relief so if it was twelve and a half grand's worth of rental sort of income that you had in you could take seven and a half grand off and just pay tax on that five grand extra that you had and if that's the case that's a really easy way you don't need any records really other than the, the the list of the rental income so you don't sit there tightening up all your expenses but you don't have to do that if it turned out you have more expenses then you might actually claim the proper expenses and not use the rental room relief so there you go you've got a couple of options there you in theory could use that micro uh, thousand pound that we were talking about as well but you're not going to you're going to use one of these one of these two main things so there we go so under seven and a half k in a solo name likely to be no tax to pay and even if you've just gone a little bit higher then you're going to have a seven and a half grand kind of deduction before you start paying tax on the rest of it so that's pretty cool that relief i think but unfortunately it's not available to all types of lettings as you say you might actually let a separate entity you might let a separate flat out somewhere that's just pure airbnb now if you do that then you actually have to calculate your profits the same way as other landlords really where you have your rent coming in and all your allowable expenses and you pay the tax on the difference now if it's a very small amount you could use that one thousand pound fixed and it's that works very similar to the rent a room allowance where you know you can either go here's my actual income and here's my actual expenses and i'm going to pay the difference or you can say i'm not going to bother adding up all of my expenses i'm just going to deduct a thousand pound 
and pay the rest and you can figure out which one's better for you just do the, the quick bit of maths and there you go so that's how you would do it generally and it works in the same way but yeah unfortunately rent a room isn't available in all circumstances one thing that is kind of cool though that's worth thinking about is if you have these external properties these external bits that are just purely now holiday furnished holiday lets they could qualify for tax treatment under exactly that furnished holiday let rules that's a mouthful to say when you're trying to record it into a camera but uh, if you fall under there there's actually some pretty good tax treatment in multiple areas i won't go into the details on those but for it to actually qualify as a furnished holiday let it has to be available to let so you know effectively listed on the airbnb site for 210 days in a year and actually let for 105 days during that period to count. But if it does count, then things like interest deductions, when you go to sell it, some certain um, repairs and things you might do in it, uh, there's better tax rules, basically. I'm just giving you an absolute top line of this. So if it does qualify, that's pretty cool as well. Um, so it's not all doom and gloom. Um, although you can't claim the rent and room relief, you might have this other option, and that's really cool. You effectively get more business taxi type rules around the furnished holiday lets than you do with a, what is effectively a residential let. And then of course you might be wondering, well, how much tax do I have to pay? Well, that question unfortunately is impossible to answer uh, specifically because it so much depends on your other income. But what I would say to you is it's either gonna be 20, 40 or 45%. So if you imagine if you took all of your profits from your Airbnb, and then you added it to what you have in your day job and let's say it come around and it was all under 50 grand combined you're likely to be paying 20 percent and i say 50 grand roughly like we do with a lot of things in these videos is roughly 50 grand but that kind of level you're going to put about 20 percent on it so you want to sort of store that amount of tax to one side if it's more then some of it's going to be in that 40 percent bracket and if you're really lucky and you're sort of in the 150 grand plus you're going to be earning 45% on there. So there you go, it gives you an idea. But for, for most people in the UK, it's gonna be 20%. One key question we get asked a lot around this is, does it affect my tax code in my job? Will it affect my tax in my job? The answer to that is in theory, no, but where you might see it is when you submit your tax return for the first time, where you have got some income there, if you've got any taxable income, what they'll do is they may adjust your tax code. So you actually pay some tax down on them predicting you're gonna do the same amount of profit again. Uh, and that all gets taken into account into your tax return at the year end. So you could see a small tweak, um, but if obviously if there's no tax to pay, it's not gonna change anything, but it's something to keep an eye out for. And the other question we get asked quite a lot is around VAT. So people are like, do I need to worry about VAT? Uh, the answer is yes, if you're doing 85,000 pound or more in Airbnb. Um, it's unfortunately, unlike residential letting, where pure residential letting is effectively exempt from VAT, you don't need to worry about it generally, um, with this kind of stuff, because it's serviced effectively, it is actually vattable. So you do need to keep an eye on your threshold. For most of you listening to this video, you're not gonna be doing more than 85,000, but for those people that are really beefing up their portfolio, this is something to be wary of. So there is potential VAT if you do reach those dizzy heights. So there we have it. As you can see, in general, you're gonna be paying tax on your Airbnb income, unless you qualify for some of these reliefs. Please do share this with people that need to know and we'll see you in the next one.